Good evening. Today we are starting topic 4.11, document the solution requirements. So we are still on uh, the same chapter, the traceability and analysis. And naturally, this is one of the most important chapters or domains of business analysis. And therefore, we are spending so much time on it. Um, in documenting the solution requirements, we have already elicited the information. We have analyzed it. Now, after analyzing all of the information that has been elicited, the business analyst documents the resulting requirements in one of many forms, depending on the organization, project needs, and the project life cycle being used. Remember, uh, we selected the project life cycle even before we started eliciting the information. So we did have a fairly good idea what kind of life cycle we are using, and naturally, the elicitation and analysis has been carried out keeping in view that project life cycle in mind and now we are uh, taking into account that project life cycle once we are trying to document this solution regardless of the form of requirements take when packaged together a set of requirements defines the solution scope to the business problem or opportunity now do you remember we did talk about a solution statement in the beginning. When we were doing the need yes. assessment, we created two documents. One was the solution statement and the other was a business case. That was from the need assessment. Now that you have done the elicitation, you have done the analysis and planning has already been completed. Now we are having all the data. And that solution statement, which we created then, now can be defined as a scope. Now we have very clearly defined the solution scope to the business problem or the opportunity. So this solution scope is going to go ahead and ultimately become the project scope. So we start from the solution scope from here. Business analyst prepares the requirements package so that the solution team understands how to develop the solution. Who is the solution team? Actually, the solution will be implemented by the project manager. But system analyst will suggest a solution. He will create many alternatives and out of those alternatives, how this job can be done. He will advise to the project manager, which is the recommended option and how what is the scope of that solution and so on and so forth therefore uh, the smooth transaction has to occur from the business analyst to the project manager so that is the solution team documentation can be produced in various levels of formality and in many forms and i would say say in varying level of in varying level of detail also so it is often dependent on the selected project life cycle, what level of detail, what level of formality and what formats are you going to be using. The solution may not be the complete solution at this time. As in the case of a project following an adaptive project life cycle, but it should represent the solution based on the information available at that point in time. So if you are following an adaptive life cycle, the, the solution will evolve. You will achieve the solution in small little iterations. But anyways, for a waterfall model, we do have a complete solution. Again, it will be elaborated although. Why do we need to document it? These documented requirements serve a multitude of purposes. Like, you know, baseline to validate the stakeholder needs. We are going to freeze the requirements we have elicited and analyzed. Naturally, we have obtained approval from the stakeholders already. They have agreed on the requirements we have created. So we have to baseline that and let the stakeholders know that this is the final version on which we are going to now develop the solution baseline definition of the solution for the business 
problem or opportunity. So the, the scope we are establishing, that is also <coughs> baselined accordingly. <coughs> Primary input to the design team, the developers, testers and quality assurance, that will be provided. This document will provide that kind of primary input and it also forms basis for user manuals and other documentation whether written or embedded into the software. Supporting details of the contractual agreements when applicable like you know statement of work and request for proposals they would be created based on these documents because the requirements are captured here. This could be a starting point for the evolution of the solution. The solution will start growing out of it. These documents would be the root documents or the base documents for the whole solution which is going to be developed out of it. It will also form based on foundation. It will also form a foundation for reusability by other project teams. Other people can learn out of it who need an understanding of the project details while it is in process or after implementation and it will provide the baseline for an audit of regulated industries and high risk projects that are required to have documented requirements. So we are providing a lot of detail in form of these documents. Despite the importance of doc uh, documenting the requirements, keep some factors in mind about the requirements documentation and what they are these requirement documentation these are only one of the several techniques to ensure can, uh, con consensus amongst all the stakeholders as to the behavior of the solution you see we have already seen there are various methods there are various methods for collecting uh, for uh, gaining the consensus like we were seeking the approval from the stakeholders documentation should not replace communication and collaboration business requirements uh, this is the second topic the business uh, after why we are using these documents business requirement documents what are the business requirement documents business requirements are goals and objectives and high level needs of the organization and provide the rationale for a new project. So these business requirements recognize what is critical to the business and why it is critical before defining a solution. In some organizations, a business requirement is considered to be high level requirement for which user or stakeholder requirements are then used to document the solution. Other organizations use the term business requirements to refer to any requirements that is not a system or technical requirement. Now business requirements may be assembled in a business requirement specification or may be part of a larger document that contains all of the requirements. When we were discussing requirements, we did say that requirement document could be one huge document with various chapters in it and those chapters could address these various different things like you know you no know, like you know we have the business requirements we have the operational requirements we have the functional requirements non functional so all these things are included in our requirements document and it is also possible that we can have separate documents prepared for each kind of requirement so this depends upon organization to organization. If your organization requires that you should have different documents for each requirement. So the business requirements could be a separate document in that case. But otherwise, this is part of the overall requirement specification or document. Organizations that use spreadsheets to capture the requirements may use a hierarchical structure with the business requirements and the starting point. In a requirements management tool, business requirements are often grouped by assigning a category or attribute. Uh, 
Um, I hope you can hear me. Yes, sir. I can hear you clearly. Okay. okay. So then comes the solution document. So each kind of requirement is a separate document in the requirement document, and you could create one big document with chapters like you know business requirement document, solution requirement document, and so on and so forth, or you could have these requirement documents separately created in separate folders. Now the solution documentation is the documentation that is comprised of the features, functions and characteristics of the product services that will be built to meet the business and stakeholder requirement. So this, what is the solution required? What are the requirements for that solution? The work of the solution development team is heavily dependent on this document solution documentation because it serves as a blueprint for the product that the solution team is being asked to build when development work is outsourced it is essential for the solution documentation to be precise and detailed because you know you are giving this job to a subcontractor and we do not want to leave anything to chance because the outsource team often lacks the business knowledge that an internal development team has so you provide it in as much detail as is needed to be given to the subcontract the business team business team have a role to review the and validate and approve these solution documents the level of formality for these processes is dependent naturally we have already said on the selected project life cycle solution documentation may be rendered in any number of forms some common forms could be the requirement documents which may be a business requirement document or a functional requirement specification or a system or software requirement specification these all could be part of the solution document deck of user stories it could also be placed as a requirement document set of use cases can be you know uh, with uh, accompanying a non functional requirements could be the solution document list of items on a product backlog could also be included in the solution document depending on whatever kind of you know life cycle you are using which is iterative then user stories and product backlog will apply otherwise not the format of the solution documentation is defining is defined in the business analysis plan which we have already created and then we decided what will be the format and method of all these documents and procedures we have created now we are at a stage to create them we are now creating those documents as they were planned in the business analysis plan then are the requirements within this you know solution document the requirements these are the product requirements which are written at different levels of detail and are associated with different requirement types for example business stakeholder solution and transition requirements where solution requirements are further categorized as functional and non functional i'll again and again refer you back to the types of requirement doc, uh, requirements and you will see that these all were the types and these types uh, each for each uh, each type we have to provide certain kind of documentation within any of these types requirements requirements into progressive levels of detail and when this occurs this can be documented in a hierarchy or with a numbering convention that demonstrates the hierarchical progression while product requirements describe what is being built or the outcome of the project or solution to the uh, to the business problem project requirement describe the constraints and necessities for successfully completion of the project you remember we said that the product requirements are the responsibility of business analyst and the project requirements what are the project requirement the work we need to do the project requirements are the responsibility of the project manager for example product requirements describe the length and width of a sidewalk to be constructed in front of a building along with such aspects as the color and texture the project requirements for laying the sidewalk 
could include number of laborers required, qualification of the laborer to handle the equipment, size of the equipment, time frame for the usage, and any restrictions on labor hours. You see, project requirements exclusively talk about how to do it, the work of the project. Whereas the product requirements just deal with the product itself. The collaboration point here is the product requirements are the responsibility of the business analyst and the project requirements are the responsibility of the project manager and this is how they collaborate because the requirements are attached linked to each other. The project requirements can only be formed if the product requirements are existing. So there is a relationship between the two. So is the relationship between the business analyst and the project manager. Next is the categorizations. Requirement categories are used to help group and structure requirements within the documentation. So you can create categories of the requirements and put them according to those categories. So that would make your documentation more organized and structured. The requirement categories may be determined before starting the documentation or the requirements may be documented first and then the category is decided whatever you want to do but then you have already uh, created the documents and now you are putting them in order or you have decided the order beforehand and now you are putting the things according to your writing the documents according to that index. When choosing the categories later, if you are doing it later, they can be determined based on the actual information gathered. Selecting the categories earlier may provide a structure, an index for use in organizing how to elicit information from the stakeholders. The process of categorization helps expose vague, misstated, ambiguous or otherwise poorly written requirements. When the business analyst is unable to place information or a requirement in a category, the requirement is likely to be invalid and may need to be revised, expanded or even removed. Categorizations used in this way filters out the bad or poorly written requirements. So if you can develop the categorizations first, it is always better. Some examples of the possible filters, scope filter, functional filter, prioritization filter, testability filter. If something does not clear the scope filter, will not go, move ahead. Functional requirements filter. If the basic functional requirements are not fulfilled and something is in addition to that, that would be stopped. Something is from a very low priority which we have already, you know, rejected and we do not encourage that level of prioritization to come here that will also be rejected and so on. Scope filter determine whether a requirement or information is in scope or out of scope or even it is unknown. Unknown refers to requirements that are possibly invalid and need to be revised or omitted. Functional filter once the functional categories have been determined any defined functional requirement not fitting into any one of the categories can be filtered out, revised or discarded. Prioritization filter, an arbitrary level of priority, needs, wants and desires is defined and used as a filter to determine which requirements stay or are removed. Testability filter is that all requirements need to be testable and all requirements should be examined to determine if they are testable. Any requirement that are not testable are filtered out and need to be revised. You must note here that filters may indicate the need for an additional classification. This is very much possible that at this stage you, you realize that there is a filter missing or there is a classification missing. So you may decide to add that classification and many of the uh, uh, items which you were about to remove may be fitted into that category, the new category you have created. So you will amend the respective filter accordingly. 
the requirement specification is a common form for documenting the requirements requirement specification attempts to specify all circumstances conditions actions reactions results and error conditions that could possibly occur in the defined solution concept is to create a manual that is followed by the development team to create the solution so the this document we are creating is going to be excessively complete and it would help the solutions team move ahead many books have been written on the subject of how to construct a requirement specification and how the individual requirements within the specification should be written so that could be referenced here there are several available standards also that can be followed each attempts to circumscribe the contents and form of the requirement specification and for that you can refer to iiba you can refer to the uh, you know uh, so software industry has a lot of standards for that for writing the requirement specifications so these requirement specification this is a generic term that includes all documents that contain requirements so this is not some specific term that is only this document could this could be the format or type of, a, of the requirement specification requirement document uh, uh, specification is a general term these requirements may be high level business oriented wants and needs are very detailed specifications required to build the new product or service formal requirements specifications are more lightweight on project using agile lean or hybrid methods these teams may produce a one to two page specification and may include user acceptance testing and trace matrices to holistically describe the product so if you have this kind of a client who can provide you uh, uh, the specifications the requirement specifications on a given format that would be wonderful because you do not have to do a lot of work in illustration and clarification documenting assumptions an assumption as you know is a factor that is considered to be true real or certain without proof or demonstration it is an assumption you have made you think that this value could work for the missing data you don't know about something and you take the most probable value as an assumption and you use it in place of the original data which is not available analysis starts with assumptions and these assumptions are either proven or disproven over the course of the project and as soon as an assumption is proven wrong you must replace this assumption by either the factual data if it becomes available or with another assumption which is which is more likely there are many situations where assumptions are valid and warranted such as complete information is available for example the business analyst assumes that a technical resources to implement the solution will be available when needed so any time you can refer back to those technical resources and get the information so complete information is always available uh, sorry is not available so you can refer back to these people to get that information success of a project is dependent upon something happening in the future for example an increase in customer population or a change in consumer interest so that could affect your assumption assumptions are made based on factors that exist currently but those factors may not exist in future so maybe i did a project currently and i had done it a specific way and i am assuming that in the next project also i would be able to do it in the same way so this is a pretty good assumption but at the same time it might not really happen in future that same way is possible common assumption about a project for example is that all members of the team will sit, stay on the project until the project is completed which is again might not be true so as soon as this assumption is proven wrong i must replace this assumption the longer the project the less likely that this assumption is true 
then is documenting the constraints project management view of a constraint is that it is a limiting factor that affects the execution of a project program portfolio or process in business analysis a constraint is a limiting factor placed on the product or solution therefore there are two level of constraints product or solution constraints and project constraints product and solution constraints deal with the solution or the product but the project constraint is the work the work involved to create that solution or create that product that is project constraint collaboration point could be the business analyst primarily is concerned with the product or solution constraint although frequently project constraints are voiced by stakeholders during elicitation and we must note it down whatever is the voice of customer therefore project constraints are documented by the business analyst because he is the owner of these project constraints uh, and passed along to the project manager for follow up while some consider all requirements to be constraints on the solution because both constraints and requirements need to meet to be met solution constraints are often treated as a, a specific category of requirement constraints are considered <coughs> by some to be a form of non functional requirement <coughs> while others prefer to think of non functional requirements as the original uh, origin of the some design or in implementation constraint the difference between constraints and requirements is that requirements are written in the positive voice because they define something that should be done and requirements should not state that something cannot be done if you want to say that uh, a table cannot be made that making a table could not be the requirement well requirements define the solution by stating what is to be done solution constraints are typically written in negative or constraining language which limit the solution by stating this action cannot be performed these constraints are placing limitation on all the problem described by the requirements is solved so it is going to create hurdles in the execution or implementation of those requirements the solution constraints are best highlighted by being placed in a separate and distinct section of the requirements document solutions constraints may fall into a few specific categories they could be geographic solution constraints a specific solution can be implemented in one city and cannot be implemented in the other city maybe due to the difference in weather or location regulations there are different regulations which can constrain your solution your organizational policy which is a internal environmental factor can impact your solution and the culture of the organization again a internal factor can impact your solutions constraint some examples of solutions constraints are as far as the geography is concerned for example restricting access to sales information to the region that the customer is located in so we have put a geographic constraint our customer is from karachi and we only wants to show him the stores in karachi so this is a geographic constraint prohibition against using certain building materials this is a regulation by regulation certain items have been prohibited by the government that you can't use them so you can't use them security restrictions preventing the use of certain data or systems by unauthorized personnel this could be a policy within the organization limitation on the amount of change that the organization can withstand over any period of time maybe there are cultural hindrances and constraints this is one of them project constraints may include direction to use predetermined equipment organizational standards or a preferred supplier 
this is within the project these are the project constraint your project may be constrained by the fact that a specific kind of equipment or standards or the supplier are mandatorily to be used restrictions such as resource utilization message size and timing software size maximum number of or size of files records or data elements this could have been specified time could be a deadline cost budget and scope these could be could provide some kind of constraints next are the guidelines for the requirements information needs to be transcribed into high quality well formatted requirement the requirement should be well written should not be confusing they should be clear concise requirements that are well written are of high value to the solution developer and overall project team because these will be clear concise and reduce conflict and confusion on what needs to be delivered how requirements are written and documented and the guidelines that help structure them are dependent on the selected project life cycle so these guidelines could differ from organization to organization requirements are often written in a text based format when developing business requirement documentation or solution requirement document and written in the format of user stories for projects that follow an adaptive life cycle for waterfall you could have descriptive or tab tabular form the guidelines for both formats are presented here requirements can be more than text and may also take a visual form as well now let's look at the functional requirements a well formatted requirement consists of following elements your requirement the state requirement statement should include what is the condition when this requirement is to be implemented what is the subject of the requirement what is imperative for this requirement any active verb active verb is do this construct a wall so construct is an active verb an object is the wall some business rule which can optionally be provided and so is the outcome now a well worded detailed level requirement might be as follows when the new account button is pressed that is the condition the system which is the subject will uh, excuse me sir yes so what yeah in, pre in previous slide point number 3 imperative what does it mean imperative is the, why should you know imperative is the command it is the action what should you do if this condition exists yes right you know what what should you do when it is raining so you are condition is it is raining subject you are the subject and imperative is do this or do do that so imperative then that you will take an umbrella doing something is imperative it is an order it is an action so like uh, like in this statement example you can see the imperative very clearly will is imperative i will do this and what will you do that will start with the active verb display display is the action and you will action on what object the new accounting entry screen so that is the object the new accounting entry screen you will display on the new accounting entry screen allowing the creation of a new account which is the outcome so you can translate this example into a functional requirement can you understand this um sir i was with you but uh, while you start explaining the example i'm lost because i cannot find the example which you have been telling me is it not in the slides yes sir that is am
Did you get it or not? Okay, it's 4.11.5. 5.1. 4.11.5.1. Yes, sir. When new account button is pressed, condition the system subject will impact display action work. Okay. Okay. I can find this. Right. Now, now look at it very closely. Um, the brackets, the things in brackets, they are just shown to guide you. You can read it without the brackets. When the new account button is pressed, the system will display the new account screen allowing the creation of a new account. Got it? This is the total function requirement. In this function requirement, the account button, pressing of the new account button is the condition. Right? Okay. Subject is the system. Imperative is the word will. Imperative is what will, will. Or word will. Yes. And active verb is the action that is display. What display on what? Object is the new accounting entry screen. And what will it result in? What will be the outcome? Allowing the creation of a new account. So you have used condition, subject, imperative, active verb, object, and outcome. This can define a complete functional requirement. Okay. So, the following characteristics serve as a checklist when reviewing the requirements to ensure they are high quality. I'll show you this. The guidelines address the writing and not the format of the requirements and are applicable to any format. So guideline is general. Guideline can give you a format or you can use those guidelines to create your own format. So the following characteristics are present in all requirements when they are of a high level of quality. And what are they? Just look at it very carefully. Although these are very common things, but you must know, you should not have any requirements which are unambiguous. It should be very clear. They should be precise. They should be consistent. If you are following this format, which I just shown you, consistently for defining every functional requirement, then your requirements will be, you know, understandable to everyone. The requirement should be correct. It should not, you know, maybe the English is correct, but the statement is not correct. It is undoable. It should be complete. It should not leave in the middle and does not define certain things. It should define all the items we have talked about. It should be measurable. If I press the button, that means the but pressing of button means what? It could be measured. What is going to come out of it? It should be measurable. It should be, you know, absolutely tangible or clear. And then it should be feasible. Your functional requirement should not be some, you know, creative statement. It should be, which could be done, which is feasible to be done. It should be traceable. You could go back and trace it back to the stakeholder or trace it forward to the activity in the project. It should be testable. How would you, you know, check whether this requirement has been fulfilled, there must be a test case for that. To explain these, unambiguous means clarity. Business analysts should take steps to ensure that the written requirements are not ambiguous. When two individuals disagree on the meeting of a requirement or when an individual interprets a requirement differently from its intended meaning, then the requirement is definitely ambiguous. The requirement needs to be rewritten to remove the ambiguity. If the requirement is not clear before requirements are baseline, stakeholders may have different interpretation of the requirement and naturally the expectations will change. Ambiguity may result in the solution team building the wrong solution component 
and others who base their work from the requirement as stated may perform their work incorrectly. A written requirement should be reviewed to see if it can be stated in a simpler or more straightforward manner, should not make it difficult, should make it easy and unambiguous. There is an example here. This requirement construct is a format that would be used to text-based requirements written by a project following a predictive life cycle. So uh, let us see what is the unambiguous requirement. An ambiguous requirement could be the system shall check the name field to be any alphabetic and the address field to be either alphabetic or numeric but containing only address in the US or Canada and the quantity field to be only numeric. So this statement has talked about so many things and none of those things is clearly defined. Let us look at what we want. We want the system should have a validation mechanism, should validate certain things. And there are more than one things mentioned in this requirement. Number one, it should check the name field as if it is alphabetic. Number two, it should check the address field as if it is alphanumeric or numeric. Number three, all addresses must be checked for they are only from USA or Canada. Number four, the quantity food field must be numeric in nature. So the ambiguous requirement have been converted into unambiguous requirements. Similarly, the second one, the ambiguous requirement is system provides identification of the employee when passing through the reader. So we don't really understand what does that mean. So it says the unambiguous requirement could be when the employee passes through the reader, the system displays the photograph of the employee on the monitor. You understand? Similarly, going over to the, to the uh, precise. Yes, As a whole, the solution document states precisely what the solution to the business problem is. No more, no less. Precisely, exactly what you want. Don't leave things out for judgment. Precision also refers to choosing the right words. With adaptive lifecycle methods, the business analyst should specify at what point the requirements will need to be precise as the requirements will unfold into details through incremental elaboration. Therefore, it is understood early on that all details may not be known. So in Agile, we already understand that all requirements are not going to be, all details are not going to be known. So let us see the table for the examples of precise and imprecise language. Example of imprecise language is when the department code entered does not match the department code on file, the system will display an error message. So compare and do what when the department code entered does not match the department code on file so let us see what is the correct when the department code entered does not match the department code on file the system will display this message invalid department code when you say an error message it could be an any error message maybe the error message is syntax file Syntax error. Consistent. Each requirement should be included one time in the solution document to avoid contradiction and redundancy. You know, two requirements or which are about the same thing, but the, uh, the requirements are described in exactly opposite manner would not serve the purpose. The requirements should not be in conflict with, with one another within the recommendation set. The language needs to be consistent throughout. 
the business analyst maintains the consistency through rewrites, revisions, changes, and modifications to the solution document. These revisions occur naturally in the iterative nature of the business analysis. As more information is uncovered during elicitation, the business analyst analyzes it and incorporates it into the documentation. So it is a progressive elaboration thing going on. As and when we learn more things, we will keep adding them. A traceability matrix helps to ensure consistency. Traceability is used to verify consistency and is achieved when determining the relationship between the requirements. Traceability and the traceability matrix are discussed in next chapter that is traceability and monitoring. Conflicting requirements are not unusual. There definitely will be some conflicting requirement but you have to understand and identify and remove them. When there are multiple system business analysts working on the same set of requirements and performing elicitation separately so various stakeholders would be providing or feeding them diverse information which could be in conflict to each other so there could be conflicting requirements one way to prevent contradictory requirements is to assign only one business analyst the responsibility for writing the finished document so let the others collect the data and make one man responsible for writing them down as if he can use this consistent language inconsistencies are also introduced in requirements when multiple terms are used to mean the same thing so try to use a consistent language and consistent adjectives for example when referring to the result of a project as the new system the new accounts payable system and the financial system you know at one place you say new system at another place you say account payable system and another place you say financial system when you mean, mean the same thing use one word one one term should be used for that everywhere within the same set of documentation these readings will assume that document refers to three different systems but we are not referring to three different systems these are all the same system so why don't we call them account payable system that is more appropriate even though it may be repetitive to use the same terminology time and again it ensures consistency and unambiguous requirements you know it might not look good as far as the english language is concerned but you are not competing in an english language competition we want to be consistent and unambiguous so some inconsistency examples are the security system will this is inconsistent the new security system will the secure card system will the rf security system will the simple thing is you are using four different terms for the same thing why can't you just say the security system will whatever you know you have to fill in the blank for the remaining thing but wherever you have to mention to any item of security system simply say the security system so it is consistency of terminology contradictions occur when stakeholders have opposing requirements for example two different business units or constituencies may each want their own requirements regardless of how their requirements may impact another stakeholder stakeholder himself will not care about other stakeholder this is the business analyst who will bring it to the same level and the same language there are a few ways of resolving this particular situation the most direct route is to bring the contradicting parties together in the same room and have them work through the inconsistency and come up with one consistent definition information can be added to one requirement which details special circumstances that remove the contradiction it may be necessary 
to support both requirements in these cases requirements for each user group are captured in the form of stakeholder requirement and you could refer the two terms you are using as they are coming from the two different stakeholders for example when a business unit requires 4000 transactions per day and another business unit requires 2000 transactions per day the requirement will be consistent if stated that 4000 transactions a day are required during the holiday season from october to december 31 and 2000 transactions a day is required for the remainder of the year so you have specified and cleared the inconsistency the requirement may be rewritten to add more clarity such as 4000 transactions a day are desired but 2000 transactions a day are mandatory you see how it has been further clarified within a single software requirement specification it is possible to introduce ambiguity by repeating information when requirements are repeated there is a risk that a change is reflected in one requirement and left unchanged in a duplicated one one way to avoid ambiguity incurred through redundancy is to remove the redundancy if something is causing confusion you stop using that term Uh, excuse me, uh, just to get the slide back, it has crashed. It will take a minute. Uh, are you okay with whatever we talked about? Slide. Jim? Yes, sir. But, sir, sir, I can see the slide. Uh, it's the example of consistency. Yeah, but uh, on, on my computer, PowerPoint has crashed. So, I'll get it back on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, got it. <coughs> uh, so it's refreshing right now. Yeah. Did not come. So not yet. Yes, it's appearing now. <coughs> okay. Right. Can you see this? Yes, sir. I can see. Consistent. Okay. Right. So, we are talking about consistent. So, contradictions occur when stakeholders have opposing requirements. 
For example, two different business units or constituencies may each want their own requirements regardless of how their requirement may impact another stakeholder. As I said, uh, these stakeholders don't care about each other. This is the job of the business analyst to make peace amongst themselves. There are a few ways of resolving this particular situation. The most direct route is to bring the contracting parties together. Uh, this we, we didn't talk about this. Sorry. Okay, let's move on to uh, uh, 4.11.5.1. That is correct. Yes, sir. Each requirement should accurately describe the functionality to be built. Correctness is not absolute. The solution document is only as correct as the information that has been obtained up to the point. You see, you cannot ensure that whatever you are writing is correct because the information provided to you was wrong and you don't know that was wrong. So whatever you are doing is uh, seems correct to you, but it might not actually be correct. So it has to be checked and confirmed that the information you are putting in the functional requirement is correct. As more information is uncovered, adding new information makes the solution document more correct by removing some assumptions, clarifying ambiguities and adding new information in a progressive elaborative approach. The following basic rule help to ensure correct requirements. Only the product stakeholder can confirm that a requirement is correct. Correctness is established through frequent review and confirmation sessions with the sources of information. Correctness is the purview of the business community. Again, what is in general, no single requirement should be committed to the solution document until it has been confirmed by a second source. In the case of requirement documentation, the second source may be another individual from the business community or a different way of gathering information, maybe gathering information about a process through observation and then interviewing the process workers who have been observed for confirmation on what they have seen. You see, uh, it is not only writing a functional requirement based on the input of one person and getting it confirmed from him. Still, it could, be, it could not be correct. So you ensure that you check it, cross check it with some other users also and confirm that the information provided by first person is exactly what others want. Completeness, as we said, is also not absolute. As correctness was not absolute, completeness is also not absolute. Again, it all depends upon the information which has been provided to you. Therefore, the guidelines that apply to correctness also apply to completeness. So you again have to confirm it for completeness purposes. Business analysts should ensure that enough information is gathered and documented to complete the requirement. However, too much information makes the requirement difficult to follow and convey. So it should not be two pages long requirement. You see, you have already seen how long a requirement should be. We have seen an example in the beginning. So the requirement should not be extremely lengthy. Guidelines for concerning these requirements for completeness. Document all known requirements, especially those that are confirmed by the stakeholders. This includes all conditions that apply to a requirement. Include in each requirement all of the information necessary for the solution team to design, build and test the solution component. A requirement is said to be self-contained when this is true. All necessary requirements should be included. Responses specified for all inputs. Requirements that produce all necessary outputs and labels and references to all figures, tables and diagrams. You must note what constitutes completeness is dependent on the selected project lifecycle. So, take into account, example of complete is like, you know, an incomplete statement could be, a requirement could be, a card reader shall be of the same dimensions as indicated by the card size and consistent with industry standard. Now, you have not specified what is the card size and what are the industry standard. So, let us correct this. You say, card reader dimensions to be determined by April 3rd by Mr. XYZ. 
So don't just give a vague statement, incomplete statement, which does not serve the purpose at all. Another example, terminate a session after the number of incorrect passwords exceeds the maximum allowed. What is maximum allowed? You must tell what is the maximum allowed. So terminate a session after three incorrect passwords have been entered. You see, you must put in the complete information. But constitute completeness is dependent on the selected project lifecycle. Because of the necessary assumptions, requirements may exist in an incomplete form. Use the term to be determined, TBD, is acceptable for use provided there is a date when the information is to be determined and optionally the name of the person who is responsible for determining it. So assign this responsibility to someone to fill in the gaps. These should be resolved for a given portion of the requirements before proceeding with construction. Measurable. Each requirement needs to be independently measurable. There must be a metric defined for every requirement and uh, you must be able to check whether when this requirement will be fulfilled, how will be checked, how will be tested. A requirement that is measurable provides the necessary detail to understand the criteria for testing. So measurable is directly proportional to testing. Measurability is usually a prerequisite to testability and a requirement that is not measurable cannot be tested. For example, there will be no more than six training classes per employee. So how would that be measured? The correct one would be each employee will have not less than two and no more than six training classes residing on their professional development profile. So a limit has been defined and now we know that anything between two and six is acceptable. Anything less than two and more than six is not acceptable. Another example, the new production line shall be efficient. Well, how efficient do you want it? The new production line shall produce an average of 5,000 bottles, bottle caps per day. So now we can measure 5,000 bottle caps per day. Feasible. Feasibility, we have already discussed in section number two. That was when we were doing the need assessment. But this, the focus of the feasibility analysis performed at the forefront of the business analysis work pertain to the work to determine the feasibility of various solutions options. The feasibility discussed in requirement elicitation and analysis pertains to feasibility of each requirement. Feasibility here is conducted at a much more specific and detailed level. The same categories of feasibility used in the needs assessment when evaluating a solution option can be applied here to evaluate the feasibility of our requirement. So here we are talking about the feasibility of our requirement. So whether the, this requirement is feasible, should it be done or not? For example, it should be operationally feasible, it should be technologically feasible, it should be cost effective, it should be time effective. So all these feasibilities matter. Operational feasibility, when the solution requirement is met with the implementation of it within the solution, be supported by the, all stakeholders who use the new product solution. Ensure a solution requirement for one stakeholder group does not make the use of the product inefficient or unusable to another stakeholder group. Technology wise, can the requirement be fulfilled based on the technologies that have been selected for the solution? While the solution as a whole was assessed for technological feasibility, the focus here is on each specific requirement. We are not talking about the solution feasibility. We are talking about each requirement. Involve the solution development team to ensure that each requirement is technically feasible. Te technical feasibility is more easily kept in check with adoptive project life cycles because the project team is working on a, on a small amount of the solution at a time and is collaborating daily whereas with the predictive life cycle there is a risk that business analyst is not interacting 
with the solution development team often enough. When following a predictive or iterative life cycle, ensure requirements are evaluated for feasibility by the solution development team before they are baseline. Baseline stakeholders will be more disappointed to be informed late in the process that a highly desired requirement was not technically feasible than learning about it early in the process when the requirements was provided. So share it with the business stakeholders as early as possible as if their needs and expectations can be kept in check. Cost effectiveness due to the cost to fulfill the requirement makes sense with respect to the value of requirement will deliver to the business. Always consider here the requirement, not the whole solution. Is this requirement cost effective? Cost may be one of the requirement attributes. There could be many other things. Time you are checking, operational, technical, lot many things you are checking. So here we are only concerned about cost. Is this requirement cost effective? Work with the solution development team, business stakeholders and the project manager to ensure the cost effectiveness of each requirement is analyzed. A requirement makes sense when the value it provides is greater than the cost to implement it. Then is a the time feasibility. Can the defined requirement be met within the time allocated for the project phase or should the feature be considered for a future release? A project delay may occur from a single requirement. Therefore, it is better to know upfront when a requirement will require a level of effort by the solution development team that exceeds the time allocation for the entire development phase. So if you see and find that one of the requirements can delay the project, you must take action accordingly, maybe through a change request or whatever. There are no one single factor, there is no one single factor such as time or cost that determine the feasibility of a solution option or evaluates the feasibility of a requirement. Feasibility is best analyzed according to a variety of factors. Traceable. Traceable requirements are those that can be mapped back to the source of the requirement and mapped forward through the development life cycle to the test case that proves that the requirement was successfully satisfied. So traceability should be there. Requirements may also be traced between the requirement and back to the business case, business goals, objectives and high level requirements. It is important to be able to trace any given requirement back to the source in the event that there are changes to the requirement or other changes that impact the requirement. Business analyst uses the source to identify who to contact when the requirement changes within the predictive lifecycle project from a project management perspective, traceability provides a fair, accurate estimate of the level of completion for development. When all the requirements can be traced to test cases. Test case, what it is? This is the last check to see if the requirement has been met and passes the test. So every requirement must have a test case. So it should be traceable to the test case through design and build the person complete and more importantly what remains to be completed can be determined by the number of test cases that have been successfully executed. When uh, sir, it's who's, JJ? sir, it's whose responsibility to prepare the checklist or the test cases, sorry. Uh, for the? Test cases. Naturally, these requirements are within the project manager's purview because he's actually doing it, doing them. He is doing the work of the project. So he will, as you know, project manager ensures two things. Number one, the product and number two, the work. So as far as the product is concerned, it passes through the quality assurance and quality control. And as far as the project work is concerned, it passes through the work performance report, work performance data, work performance information, Work performance. Right, sir, uh, right, right. Right now, the project is not been approved for me. Okay, and I am doing the business analysis for this requirement. You are tracing the requirements. That means, when do you trace the requirement? When 
the project has already started. You have given these requirements and now you are track, tracking them back. Right? The okay. projects have been finalized, you have planned everything, enlisted everything, and now is the time when the project has started. And now the things are changing and you are keeping track of each requirement. The, the, the a job of keeping track of each requirement still lies with the business analyst, but checking them physically is in the preview of the project manager. Is it okay, possible? sir? Okay, when 100% yes. of the test cases have been executed, that means, and they have been passed, that means 100% of the requirements have been satisfied, at least in the build phase. Traceability is further discussed in section 5, which is traceability and monitoring. Testable. Requirements should be written in a way that allows them to be tested. When a requirement is not testable, it is typically because the requirement is vague, unclear, and ambiguous, or has violated some other principle or writing guidelines for quality requirements. Testable requirements allow for an assessment of past fail. This is a check. If the requirement is written to be measurable, then the requirement can be tested. You see, we are developing a guideline for these requirements. This guideline will be implemented when we are actually doing them. And when they will be done, that time project would already be in motion. Confirming the testability of a requirement does not mean creating or writing the test case for execution during the test stage. Confirm only that a test can be created to verify that the requirement has been satisfied. Sometimes the evaluation criteria are constructed in the case of development of user stories. For more information on evaluation activities performed for solution validation, that will be discussed in the last domain, section 6, solution evaluation. Once you have done that, we move on to the prioritization of these requirements. What we have done is, we have provided the guidelines for the requirements now, and now is the time we are prioritizing the requirements. And how do you prioritize the requirements? We, you know, sort them out in order of value priority. How requirements are prioritized should be fully defined in the business analysis plan. Uh, so can you hold our session and we can start this topic tomorrow, prioritize requirements? Okay, fine. I think, uh, yeah, of course, why not? Mm. Well, there are a number of slides and uh, I guess, uh, inshallah, by tomorrow we'll be able to close this complete topic. Yeah, of course, of course we'll do that. Okay, let's see. The, let's see you tomorrow, and uh, I wish and pray for your son and everything goes right. So please take care. Sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, please uh, keep remember us in your prayers. Um, <laughs> it's always needed to me sure. by everyone. Sure. Take care. Take care. Love is. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Love.